justices, judges, bar leaders, and all distinguished attorneys watching today. Welcome to the virtual golden celebration. What incredible talent in this year's class. The class of 1971. This is a group of true legal superstars. I'm Rob Buchanan, president of the State Bar of Michigan, and it's an honor serving our profession this year. And it's been an interesting one. But today isn't about me. Let's talk about 1971, the year you became Michigan attorneys. What an incredible year to start law practice. What a year to be alive. Let's look at two things, the legal landscape in 1971 and the vibrant culture that year, both overflowing with landmark events and historic moments. 1971 was quite a year in the law. It seems there were more landmark U.S. Supreme Court decisions that year than in any other in history. Consider these cases and how they change legal practice and our lives. In the area of individual rights, there was Schwann versus Charlotte Mecklenburg Board of Education, where the high court held the busing of students to promote racial integration in public schools was constitutional. This ruling ensured all students would receive equal education regardless of race. And in Phillips versus Martin Marietta Corporation, the court held an employer may not, in the absence of business necessity, refuse to hire women with preschool aged children if it hired men with such children. Phillips was the first gender discrimination case under Title VII of the Civil Rights Act to reach the court. There was also major developments in criminal law. In Bivens versus six unknown named agents, the court held individuals may sue federal government officials for violating Fourth Amendment rights, even though private lawsuits are not authorized by law. It found the existence of a remedy for constitutional violation is implied because of the importance of the right violated. And it was a huge year for constitutional law. In Cohen versus California, the high court held the First Amendment prohibits states from making public display of a four letter profanity a crime without a more specific and compelling reason beyond offensiveness. Painting fudge the draft on the back of your suit jacket for a court appearance is protected speech. In New York Times versus United States, the court concluded the executive branch's desire to keep the Pentagon Papers secret did not subordinate the New York Times First Amendment right to print the material. And in Lemon versus Kurtzman, it held that for a law to be considered constitutional under the Establishment Clause, the law must have, quote, a legitimate secular purpose must not have the primary effect of either advancing or inhibiting religion and must not result in an excessive entanglement of government and religion. A lot was happening in the law in 1971. Perhaps my favorite thing about jurisprudence 50 years ago, however, is this group of attorneys stepping forward and excelling in the profession. For example, you built on and improved race and gender equality in Michigan by fighting for equality. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. This Golden Group paved the way for me and other attorneys, and you helped us pave the way for young lawyers that follow. We are grateful to you. And now for the fun facts about 1971. How about the non-lawyer issues? The music world took a big hit with the loss of Jim Morrison, and we gained a couple of future icons with the birth of Snoop Dogg and Michigan's own Kid Rock. In politics, Richard Nixon was president, and there were shenanigans in the White House. 
Some things never change. Meanwhile, the U.S. Senate approved lowering the voting age to 18. Washington state banned gender discrimination. And Nixon commuted Jimmy Hoffa's jail term. The Congressional Black Caucus organized. The National Women's Political Caucus was founded. And Michigan's future governor, Gretchen Whitmer, was born. In sports, the University of Michigan Wolverines football team had a perfect 11-0 record. Willie Mays hit his 638 home run, setting a National League record. Satchel Paige became the first black player elected to the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. The U.S. Supreme Court overturned the draft evasion conviction of Muhammad Ali and Gordy Howe retired from the Detroit Red Wings. Meanwhile, in pop culture, Disney World opened in Florida. Dirty Harry debuted in movie theaters. We saw Ed Sullivan sign off after his last really big show, and Charles Manson was sentenced to life in prison. And what about the economy? Average income, just $11,000 a year. Average price of a home, just over $25,000, and gas was only 33 cents a gallon. And looks like for Christmas, when my parents bought the operation game for me, they paid $4. Needless to say, 1971 was a very good year. We said goodbye, we said hello, and we moved forward with great zeal especially you, this group. So as we stroll down memory lane together today, I really wanna thank you for all you've done for all of us who stand on your shoulders. You are truly a special group of attorneys and a special group of human beings. Thank you very much and congratulations. Let me begin by saying I'm genuinely honored and humbled to be among the greatness in this room, this virtual room. I recently had the pleasure of reviewing your responses to the questions the State Bar asked you during the planning of this event. And it's an understatement to say I was blown away. The collective achievements and accomplishments of those of you celebrating 50 years of bar membership are incredible and overwhelming. The State Bar of Michigan's class of 71 has produced an inordinate amount of dignitaries responsible for the development of key jurisprudence, has opened doors for women and minorities, and has given back in so many ways. As for dignitaries, we have bar association presidents, local and state magistrates, judges and justices from the district level to the Michigan Supreme Court, federal administrative law judges, federal magistrates, federal district judges, and at least one judge from the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. The only thing missing is a U.S. Supreme Court justice. Underachievers, we also have a former FBI agent, a former legislative counsel to U.S. Senator Philip Hart during Watergate who told us the stories are too numerous to mention, and a former VP and general counsel for Ford Motor Company. We even have a winner of four presidential medals. I wasn't exaggerating when I said this is a star-studded group. And the group is not significant in name and title only. As I mentioned, this group certainly lived up to its billing in terms of its high achievement, whether it was developing important jurisprudence or opening doors for the next generation of lawyers. This group has tried thousands of cases, won as many multi-million dollar verdicts as they have received major no-cause verdicts, and represented NFL and Canadian Football League players. You are also responsible for so much developed or still developing law, including the DeBoer v. Snyder case that secured the right to marriage equality for same-sex couples, and California v. Greenwood, where the U.S. Supreme Court held that warrantless searches by police officers of trash placed outside the residence for collection was lawful. Despite all of these accolades, this group has something even more important, humility and gratitude. To say that this group has gone above and beyond 
and given back is an understatement. We have a lawyer who represented a client who was severely burned in an industrial accident. The man asked him to look after his children after he died, and he did. We have lawyers who spent their careers with legal aid, who took significantly reduced fees for major cases, and just generally spent their careers doing the right thing. We have lawyers who have opened doors, including one of our dignitaries who said, looking at the list, it was great to see so many former classmates and friends I have made over the years. The very small number of female names reminded me of how far we have come over the past 50 years. This dignitary made it all the way to the Michigan Supreme Court. And so many of you expressed your love of friends, family, and life in general. Here are just a few of the things you said you're most grateful for. The many friends I made, being a father, practicing first with my dad and now with one of my two attorney daughters. And not to be outdone, we even have a lawyer here who died, went to heaven, and returned to talk about it. Here's the quote. It's 1973, I had a U.S. Army parachute which failed to fully open. I fell a thousand feet and bounced when I hit the ground. The records show my heart stopped for 19 minutes and 28 seconds. They saved me and I am still very much alive. Heaven is a fabulous place. I still remember it well. Not sure we can top that one. So what are you all doing now? Apparently this group has a lot of hobbies and they run the gamut from the typical joys of life, such as reading, traveling, golf, fishing, and spending time with family, to the more unusual, such as restoring classic cars, exploring lighthouses, beekeeping, numismatics, which I just learned is the study and or appraisal of rare coins and other currency, and pickleball, which I also learned is a paddle sport that combines elements of badminton, table tennis, and tennis. We also have a retired pottery aficionado who told us this interesting story. Before I met my wife, I took pottery classes. My goal was to meet women. For whatever reason, it didn't work. I did, however, discover my creative side and collected lots of pots. I no longer do pottery. Anyone need a ceramic pot? And of course, we have plenty of volunteers in the room, giving back to so many great causes, whether it be coaching, mentoring, teaching, working with charities, serving on boards, and of course, tree hugging. You've certainly come a long way since the days of Richard Nixon, Willie Mays, Muhammad Ali, Billie Jean King, eight cent stamps, 40 cent gas, and $1.50 movie tickets. And I, for one, am grateful. It might be cliche to say, we stand on the shoulders of giants, but it's cliche because it's true. And it's especially true for this group. The doors you've opened for me and my fellow young lawyers are innumerable. So on behalf of all of us who follow in your footsteps, thank you and congratulations on all of your incredible achievements. <laughs>